Hi, Linda. Hi, Beba. How are you? I'm doing great. Good to be here with you. Oh, so nice to have you. Can we have a speaker view? Okay, here we go. Oh, it's so awesome to have you. Uh, we had a full day with all uh, kind of wide diversity speakers sharing so much powerful information. And now we have you. And we're going to focus on relationships and intimacy and dating and all the good stuff, how to bring it all together and be healthy, wealthy, and happy in love. Right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> so nice to have you here. Okay, so are you ready? I'm ready to go. Awesome. Okay, so master your brilliance, right? And we want to have it all. We want health, wealth, and love. What, how would you uh, describe, like, how is love the foundation of having it all? What's your take on it? I see it as the hub of the wheel. Mm. We have loving relationships, the other parts of our life. If we're raising kids, parenting our children, getting along with family and friends, having success in our careers, having plenty of money in the bank account, having health and longevity, all of these things from my point of view, and it's not just me, the research with the data to back it up, many years of studies, talk about where you get the most influence, and if you have terrific relationships and marriage and committed partnership are at the top of the list to give you that boost. I'm very uh, tickled by this study that was done in Germany in the yeah. 80s. And they compiled a massive amount of data from psychologists and doctors and insurance companies. And one of the questions on the inventory was, do your kid, it was just men in the study. Do you kiss your wife goodbye in the morning before you go to work? Yeah. <laughs> and they got such a boost in their longevity. You know, they followed these people up until their death date. It wasn't just a little boost in their longevity. They got five extra years on average from the men who didn't have a wife to kiss or didn't have a good relationship with the wife that they did have and didn't want to kiss her goodbye. And they traced this to find that these men were stable, had a positive attitude, that they were more likely to be promoted and get raises. And that's why it ended up with very uh, high longevity and health and money in the bank, not just a little bit of extra money in the bank, between 20 and 35% more money than the men who didn't kiss their wives goodbye. Wow. So it wasn't just the kissing. I think the kissing, you get a big boost because you get all these good hormones and endorphins and oxytocin running through your body. Um, in our field, we call that the love cocktail. But it was also the positive attitude that had these people taking good care of their bodies and their health, that they lived longer and made so much money. <laughs> wow, isn't that something so simple and doable and easy, and yet often forget, like forgotten to do it, or they don't want to do it, or whatever the reasons are. Wow. They don't realize what the huge benefits come from having a good relationship where you want to kiss your partner. Right. So it, it makes absolute sense why we need love as a foundation and then everything starts coming together. Well, it's right. everything in place. And a relationship can be not only with your uh, uh, significant as it right. It can be with the people in general. The love. To feel bonded to family family of choice, I call it, our closest mm -hmm. friends, because some of us aren't, aren't blessed to have family that we're really close to. And that means we're challenged to go and find our friends who become like family. And so it is those bonds. Um, I, not too long ago, read the book called Together okay. and it's by Murthy. Do you know, I love the book. I recommend it to everybody. It's a awesome book, but yeah. It's so beautiful. And it's about the epidemic of loneliness in our culture. Mm. And, it, and it, he 
writes beautifully, but very tender heartedly about how many people live in an apartment or a home all alone. And that loneliness is becoming more and more severe, a problem with people with depression and anxiety and even suicide attempts and actually falling through with suicide. It's a big component. And how to get out of the mode of thinking that we need to do everything ourselves. I need to handle it myself. I need to be independent. And you know, other countries don't have it as bad as we do in the States. I'm blessed to be able to teach internationally and go to other places to teach where the bonds with family and community are much stronger. So people don't suffer with that terrible aloneness. So I think you're bang on when you say it isn't just the romantic partnership, either a marriage or a committed partnership without the legal marriage, but it's, it's having heart bonds with many people. That requires that we don't accept the prevailing view of success being money and power and influence that we redefine success and many of us are as the amount of deep, meaningful relationships that we have with the precious people in our life. Yeah, beautifully said, touching, come back to the heart, wow. What are some ways to nourish those bonds? How to build them up? Well, we need to take time. People are busy. Yeah. Busy raising kids, busy raising their careers, very busy, you know, competing and people do all kinds of volunteer works for good, good works. So I think that's beautiful. But to really put the priority on our closest relationships. Mm. And when we make a commitment to do that, no matter what's going on in our life, we make sure that every day we're tending to those relationships. It doesn't have to take necessarily long, but it doesn't have, it does need to be meaningful. So just the kiss in the morning, just a few seconds, you know, 10 yeah. seconds at the most, gets you off on a good foot. But having mm, sweet text messages during the day or a sweet email during the way, day or putting a note in their book or in their lunchbox when they go off to work, do you know, or go off to school, and to have uh, a sweet reunion at the end of the workday, another kiss. Do you know how was your day and really show up and have eye contact and close down the screens? Mm. No laptop, no tablets, no cell phone. Really show up and relate, look at each other in the eye, touch, have some meaningful connection. And I work with a lot of couples, you know, that's my specialty is working with mm -hmm. couples. And invariably their relationship hasn't reached the highest heights that it can reach because they're not checking in with each other nearly mm -hmm. enough. I say daily practice is not too much, a minimum of once a week. And when people go on date night, when they plan fun activities, and when they sit down and they talk about the things that are important, the whole range of feelings. This is what lights me up. This is what makes me happy. This is my success today. This is what really was important to me. I learned something this week. And also, I'm sad when I hear about what's going on, you know, in the world. Oh, there's so many things to get sad about, but to take time to recognize that or to tell the truth when we feel lonely or to tell the truth when we're afraid and to, to really have meaningful feeling exchange about what we're experiencing, what we're needing, you know, to ask for what we want, not demand or command what we want, but to ask in a respectful way increases the chance that we get our needs met. That'll definitely lift your relationship up when most of your needs get met. Not all of them, and certainly one person can't do that. But to have meaningful conversations on a regular basis. First, we check in with ourselves. Yeah. We have an intimate relationship with ourselves where we're telling ourselves the truth about what we feel and what we need. 
And then we go public with our prayer and talk to the people who are precious to us about the things that really are deep, not just trading information, how's the weather, how did right. the ball team do, really the, the heart conversations. What do you think, what is standing in the way? Why people, like you said, loneliness, loneliness is one of the highest ones and yet people are still kind of um, running away of truly connecting. Like what is the gap? What's in the gap? I think people have a lot of fears about being vulnerable. Mm. And it's very vulnerable to tell the truth about when you feel lonely. And it's vulnerable to stick your neck out and to call a friend and say, I miss you and, and I wanna go for a walk. Can we get together for tea? I'd like to take you out to lunch. How about coming by, we'll work in the garden together at my house in the morning, then I'll go to your house and we'll work in your garden in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. It's vulnerable because we risk rejection. Mm -hmm. And you know, we're, we're all so tender and it hurts to be rejected. But if we can see that we work against our own self, interests when we don't grow the courage to reach out to ask because in all likelihood some of those people that we are reaching out to they're just as shy and fearful and vulnerable as we are and they will probably welcome our gesture right. and if, if they're busy you know it's just a refusal not a rejection and maybe we could get a rain check and we'll do it next weekend and instead right it's interesting so often it happens when you reach out to someone you haven't talked for a while you always hear so happy you called i'm so glad we reconnected that's often the case yeah often of course there are different situations but but, it, but so there's no guarantee so that's oh, what makes that's it vulnerable true. to do it yeah. but wow. I don't believe that the meek are going to inherit the earth. I think the assertive people who know what they need and go after what they need are going to be the ones that are going to be successful. Um, well, and it starts with a relationship with the self, like you uh, mentioned before, right? It's, it starts with what you want, where you are, and then you go out in the world, and then you are in a family or with your husband, and you start seeing what, how it all plays out. And it's been in the literature and the magazines and the media for decades that relationships require work. And some people have a terrific work ethic. You know, they're willing to just put their nose to the grindstone and come from whatever it takes, but they don't always know what it requires. Mm -hmm. So when my husband and I teach our workshops together, we tell people specifically what the work is. And then they can individualize it for themselves where they need to grow, where they need to develop a stronger skill set. So it's always about communication skills. That's just at the top. And to speak from your experience, you know, I statements, I feel I need, rather than speak from our head, which is often criticisms and judgment, which are off-putting. We need to learn the skill of negotiating. You know, some, some of us didn't ever see our families, our, our models and our mom and dad negotiating for their needs. So we've got a hole, do you know, that we need to fill in to learn how to negotiate for our needs. A lot of people didn't see repair done because there are inevitably going to be breakdowns in relationship. There'll be misunderstandings. Sometimes we'll be grumpy and overtired and stressed and preoccupied. And if we don't become champions of repair, it's going to keep our relationship at a lower level. So to learn how to make a full hearted, honest, sincere apology, to uh, know how to become forgiving and to let go and let bygones be bygones how to do a do-over when we learn from our errors in judgment that we have a chance to correct for it and say, you know, I've really learned that by not asking you, is this good time to talk? I've learned that that puts you on the defensive right away when I say we need to talk right now and I launch into my topic. 
Right. And so I've learned, and I'm going to be careful. I will make a holy vow to you right now that I'm going to be careful to ask you, is this good time to talk? And I can take no for an answer. And I can take a rain check that we could talk tomorrow when you're not preoccupied with the project you're working on right now. So all of these skills are really important as part of our work to be eligible for a great relationship. And also growing the qualities that allow a great relationship to flourish. I already mentioned courage, mm -hmm. commitment, patience, tolerance, acceptance, empathy, compassion, forgiveness, responsibility. These are all critical signature strengths. And some of them just born right in us, came easily to us. And some of them are our weak suits and aren't we all a mixed bag? But if we can identify what our signature strengths are and really utilize them and identify our weak suits, but commit ourselves to doing our own work to strengthen if we're not patient to become more patient. If we're not so resilient to commit to getting that bounce back ability where we learn from our misfortune and we find some redeeming value and make meaning from it. If we are risk aversive or conflict avoidant, we grow some courage to assert ourselves and to speak up. So these qualities and these skills, they don't just happen just because we love each other. Do you know the love can inspire us to do our work, that we want to have the best possible relationship. When my husband and I teach together, we call it going for the gold. Oh, I love that. <laughs> well, if we're in relationship, why not have the most glorious one we can have? What's the point otherwise, yeah. Yeah. Well, you just uh, described it so beautifully, all those uh, aspects that need it, but sometimes there is no willingness, right? One of the parties are just so comfortable where they are that they are not willing to go extra mile. What do you do with that? Thank you for the question. That's a great question. And I think that the person who's got the fire in the belly and the motivation needs to be so fiercely committed to it that mm. they become the invitation. They uh -huh. become the living example. Instead of being in the disempowered position of waiting for our partner to change, or if you're not if you're single and you're still looking looking for the partner of your dreams, become the partner of your dreams. Mm. Give what you want to receive. Model for them and appeal to their enlightened self-interest. And what I mean by that, everybody wants to be happy. And some people get complacent because the way they're living now is so much better than the last relationship they had or their, right. their plight in their family of origin. And so they feel like I'm just gonna hold the line now. I don't wanna to be too greedy for more. But if there was one in the pair who is greedy for more and I'm talking about healthy greed, do you know who has a vision of what's possible? They need to be a stand for, I believe that we could have deeper emotional intimacy than we have now. And this is what I am willing to contribute to make that happen. And what do you think? Do you think we can have it? Do you think you would like to have it? Do you think you would like to match me and bring some willingness mm -hmm. and openness so that we can have that? Would you like to have hotter sex? I would like to have hotter sex. This is what I'm willing to bring. I'm appealing to your enlightened self-interest. If you would like to have better sex, more sex, and marrieds have more and better sex, by the way. It's one of the benefits of a committed partnership. Some people think that the singles are having all the great sex. They're not. It's the couples that have been together for a while who know each other's bodies and know what lights each other up. And to appeal to our partner's self-interest, you know, there's a lot of distance in this relationship. We're not as close as we could be. I'm willing to bring this. Would you be willing to bring anything to it? Mm -hmm. Or if they argue a lot, do you know, there could be these ch chilly, periods or these overheated periods where you're in recovery from the fight, 
Would you like to fight less? This is what I think could be an end to our arguing. So do you see that the person who has the desire for a better relationship, a stellar relationship, a golden relationship has more responsibility? Not to be in the waiting position is disempowered, but to be in the proactive position by being the living example because it's contagious. The despair and the hopelessness and the feeling of defeat is hopelessness, but so is inspiration. That's, that's contagious too. Yeah. Well, it takes two to tango, right? So it, it perfectly explains on how both bring something on the table. It's synergy. And when both people start to click in that, wow, we could create something great here. This is good enough, but we could go higher, deeper, more meaningful. And mm -hmm. in these older couples who have been together for decades, you know, 40, 50 years yeah. and more, some of them are still madly in love with each other. I love it. They do the MRIs on their brains and the, the part that's about romantic love lights up in these older couples, just like the 20 year olds that are just falling in love. They're still in their early 20s. So mm -hmm. when they interview these couples who are so successful and really crazy about it, each other, I consider me and my husband to be yeah. among that group. And they ask them about their secrets of success. They talk about change, adventure, stimulation. We're always trying new things. We're always learning from each other. We're always going on exotic trips and we're meeting new people and making new friends. Do you see they're on their growing edge throughout? They haven't gotten complacent. Right. Well, there are also those uh, pictures and stories of the couples who uh, pass away. They die together or like very uh, short period apart. Yeah. Like it's, there is something to it and we can't explain it. The energy is just... The medical science um, actually has a term for it. They call it dying of a broken heart. Oh. When you sustain a very deep and meaningful loss, you're more at risk for a heart attack and a stroke. So there is a period right after your beloved dies where you're very vulnerable to dying yourself. Mm. There are some couples who, who welcome that. <laughs> they don't want to, the person who, the survivor doesn't want to go on alone. Are you thinking about the notebook, the, the book, the notebook? They made a movie about that. Where they, I, I saw oh, the movie. I don't, this did not come from a movie, but I remember I just read somewhere online. There was this story. Yeah. Yeah. It's a sweet story. It's a made up story, but it could be real. It's a very beautiful, touching story. Wow. Um, so living um, from the place of heart and love and flourishing, blossoming relationship, how does, how would it look like in real life? Like you are, can you give us an example? Mm -hmm. Yes, I can. The couple holds a high bar. The mm. both hold a high standard. They're not willing to sweep issues under the rug. When I teach, I call them the incompletions. Mm -hmm. People who are conflict phobic and anger phobic, they put a lot under that rug, and can trip you up. When you have months and years of incompletion, it's really hard on the relationship. So one of the ways to keep it cleaned up is to handle those issues as they come up. And they, they don't go away. You know, they just keep waiting for attention. So if a week ago or a month ago, you know, you were visiting your in-laws and you didn't feel like you were treated well and you just sucked it up and you didn't say to your husband, I wish that you had spoken in, your, in my behalf and defended me. Mm -hmm. Do you know that, that that's sticking in there? And it's just chipping away at the well-being that you two can enjoy. And there is a respectful way to bring it up. I'm having some feelings about the visit that we had to your folks. 
and I'm not feeling very good towards you because I was wishing and hoping that you would defend me when they made those critical remarks. Do you see that that's handling it before it marinates and gets more resentful and it's not very high in your consciousness anymore, but it's a barrier between you. And a lot of couples have a lot of those incompletions. And so they're living more parallel lives. They're not really bonded and close and secure and feel safe, that they're valued and prized by the other. So handling the incompletions, direct way to get to the higher levels also having these regular check-ins where you are meaningfully hooked up to each other, direct way, repair, direct way. And I always, I always use the metaphor when I'm, when I'm teaching about see the relationship as a living being, like a baby, like a new baby in the family and that you need to fuss over it. You need to coo over it. Oh, you're so sweet. You're so beautiful. I love you so much. And to clean those diapers up, you need to clean up the dirty diapers to keep the baby from getting a rash and being cranky. And you need to give the, the baby nourishing food. And people like the image of the baby. And to think of the relationship as something that needs to be nourished and cleansed clicks in for people and they say, oh, I haven't really been cooing over the baby enough. We need to say thank you more to each other and catch each other doing things right and acknowledging each other and giving appreciation and gratitude because we think it and feel it, do you know, often it's in our heart, it's in our mind, but we don't open our mouth to say it. And mm -hmm. so the other person doesn't get to have the benefit of basking into the lovely, warmth of I really enhance their life I really bring a lot you know he learns from me every day I learn from him every day my life is so much better off because he's in it and I'm assured that his life is so much better off that I'm in it I'm not a nuisance I'm not a problem I'm not a net loss I'm a big gain do you know that really perks a relationship up when people um speak their heart to each other wow yeah amazing so communication is key speaking up um well beautiful linda here is the link if you want to learn more about linda the uh, linda bloom and her work that's in the chat and also the free gift if you want to talk a little more about the free gift and what are you offering yes we have three free ebooks. Oh, wow. One of them is 10 chapters lifted up out of our very first book, 101 Things I Wish I Knew When I Got Married, Simple Lessons to Make Love Last. That was our big runaway bestseller with over 100,000 copies sold. Oh, wow. so we picked up the 10 most important things that we've learned since we've gotten married. And we're having our 50th wedding anniversary amazing yes so it's been a long time since we got married and i will tell you that the 101 things that i wish i knew was narrowed down from 300 that's how ignorant we were when we got married we have a lot to learn we didn't want to write a big heavy tome so we narrowed it down and then we narrowed it down to the 10 most important for the ebook there's also 10 chapters on sexuality and sensuality get that love cocktail working for you for your health and your longevity and your emotional well-being and your positive attitude and the last but not least free ebook is 10 chapters that are excerpted from our book that's coming out in october called an end to arguing because mm -hmm. when when couples argue unskillfully it brings their well-being in their relationship down when they threaten and they name call and they say, I'm going to divorce you. And those yeah. kinds of things are so unskillful. Uh, and when they're control freaks and when they're avoidant. So we, we hit some of the top 10 in that one. So they're, they're very useful, practical tips, which all of our books and blogs and videos are. But that would be the gift for the people who give us their email address. 
Oh my God, beautiful. Thank you. So much information to grow and learn and really have a beautiful relationship. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much. So happy to have you here and to hear your story and your insight. Is there anything else you want to share to sum this up? Yes, I just want people to know that uh, if they go to our website, we have a free store. So in addition to the free eBooks, there's 160 videos and there's links to Psychology Today where we have, have lots of blogs. So of course I want people to buy our books, but there's also these other free things that will support them on their path. And these for the people who have some fire in the belly really wanna go for the golden relationship. So it's bloomwork.com. How amazing, go for the gold. And that's <laughs> a, a finalizing this whole interview of like, go for the gold. That's right. You got it. Linda Bloom link and get, get the gold. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you. I appreciate what you're doing too. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.